Boy, that but it was really good. It was really good. This is super cool. So it's um, a lot of fun effects will be able to be made with this. Your your application, the the Ray Ban Meta Glass, uh, your vision for for uh, bringing AI into the virtual world. Uh, is really interesting. Tell us about that. And that's like more than a billion people in the world. So that's going to be a pretty big thing. I think the smart glasses are going to be sort of the mobile phone kind of always on version of the next computing platform. If you'd asked me five years ago, were we going to get holographic AR mm -hmm. before AI? I would have said, yeah, probably. Oh yeah, but I think we're going to get to the point where it actually is. 안녕하세요. 엔드플랜의 마초입니다. 웹 1.0은 인터넷과 PC, 웹 2.0은 앱과 스마트폰으로 대표되죠. 이번 영상에서는 웹 3.0의 짱이 되기 위해 회사 이름까지 메타로 바꾼 마크 주커버그가 차세대 플랫폼 기기에 대해 이야기합니다. 이러한 기술들이 일상과 산업에 어떤 변화를 가져올지 미래를 그리시는 데 도움이 되길 바랍니다. 영상 시작합니다. Let's talk about um, the next the next wave. Um, you know, one of the things that I really love about the work that you guys do, computer vision, uh, one of the models that we use a lot internally uh, is segment everything. The segment anything model that, that you're talking about, we're actually presenting, I think, the next version of that here at, at, at SIGGRAPH, segment anything two. Um, and it is, it now works, it's faster. It works in video now as well. Boy, that, but it was really good, it was really good. This is super cool. It's recognizing tracking the cows. Yeah, yeah, so it's um, a lot of fun effects will be able to be made with this and because it'll be open, a lot of more serious applications across the industry too. So, yeah. I mean, scientists use this stuff to you know, study um, like coral reefs and natural habitats and um, and kind of evolution of landscapes and things like that. But I mean, for example, you have a warehouse and it's got a whole bunch of cameras and the warehouse uh, AI uh, is watching everything that's going on. You know, a stack of boxes fell uh, or somebody spilled water on the ground um, or, you know, what, whatever accident is about to happen. The AI recognizes it, generates the text, send it to somebody and, you know, uh, you know uh, help will come along the way. And so that's one way of using it. Uh, instead of recording everything, if there's an accident, instead of recording every nanosecond of video and then going back and re retrieve that moment, it just, re it just records the important stuff because it knows what it's looking at. And yeah. so, so I, having a vi video understanding model, a video language model is really, really powerful for all, all these, these interesting applications. Your, your application, the, the Ray-Ban Metaglass, uh, your vision for, for uh, bringing AI into the virtual world uh, is really interesting. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so there's all the smart classes, yeah. right? So I think when, when we think about the next computing platform, you know, we, we kind of break it down into mixed reality, the headsets, and the smart glasses. The smart glasses, I think it's easier for people to wrap their head around that and wearing it, because it's, you know, pretty much everyone who's wearing a pair of glasses today yeah. will end up, that'll get upgraded to smart glasses, and that's like more than a billion people in the world. So that's going to be a pretty big thing. The VR, MR headsets, I think, some people find it interesting for gaming or different uses, some don't yet. My view is that they're gonna be both in the world. I think the smart glasses are going to be sort of the mobile phone, kind of always on version of the next computing platform. And the mixed reality headsets are gonna be more like your workstation or your game console, where when you're sitting down for a more immersive session, and you want access to more compute. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I mean, the glasses are just very small form factor. Um, there are going to be a lot of constraints on that. Just like you can't do the same level of computing on a phone. Really? For Quite smart amazing. glasses, we've been, we've been going at the problem from two different directions. On the one hand, we've been building what we think is sort of the technology that you need for the kind of ideal holographic AR glasses. We're doing all the custom silicon work, all the custom display stack work, like all the stuff that you would need to do to make that work. And they're glasses, right? It's not a headset. It's not like a VR or MR headset. They look like glasses, but um, they're still quite a bit far off from the glasses that you're wearing now. I mean, those are very thin. But um, but even even the Ray-Bans that we that we make, you couldn't quite fit all the tech that you need to into that yet for kind of full holographic AR. Though we're getting close, and over the next few years, I think we'll we'll basically get closer. It'll still be pretty expensive, but but I think that'll start to be a product. Um, the other angle that we've come at this is let's start with good looking glasses. By partnering with the best glasses maker in the world, Essilor Luxottica, they basically make, they have all, all the big brands that you use. Uh, so we've been working with them on, on the Ray-Bans, we're on the second generation. And the goal there has been, okay, let's constrain the form factor to just something that looks great. Great idea. And within that, let's put in as much technology as we can 
understanding that we're not going to get to the kind of ideal of what we want to fit into it technically, but it'll it'll but at the end it'll be like great looking glasses. Mm -hmm. And we at this point we have we have camera sensors, so you can you can take photos and videos. You can actually live stream to Instagram. You can take video calls on WhatsApp and stream to the other person. Mm -hmm. um, you know what you're seeing. I mean, it has it has a microphone and speakers. So, I mean, the speakers actually really, really good. good it's, speakers. it's like it's open ear, so yeah, really you know, a lot of people speakers. find it more comfortable than than earbuds. Yeah. Um, you can listen to music, and it's just like this private experience. That's pretty neat. People love that. You can take phone calls on it. But then it just turned out that that sensor package was exactly what you needed to be able to talk to AI too. Yeah. So right. that was sort of an accident. If you'd asked me five years ago, were we going to get holographic AR mm -hmm. before AI? I would have said, yeah, probably. Right. I mean, it's, it just seems like kind of the graphics progression and the display progression right, yeah. on all the virtual and mixed reality stuff and building up the new display stack. We were just making continual progress towards that. That's right. And then this breakthrough happened yeah, with right. LLMs. Yeah. And it turned out that we have sort of really high quality AI now yeah. and getting better at a really fast rate before you have holographic AR. Yeah. So it's sort of this inversion that, that I didn't really expect. I mean, we're, we're fortunately well positioned because we were working on all these different products. But I think what you're going to end up with is um, just a whole series of different potential glasses products at different price points with different levels of technology in them. So I kind of think... Um, Based on what we're seeing now with the Ray-Ban Metas, I would guess that displayless AI glasses mm -hmm. at like a $300 price point mm -hmm. are going to be a really big product that yeah. like tens of millions right. of people or hundreds of millions of people eventually are going to have. Super interactive AI that you're talking to. Yeah. You have visual, you have yeah. visual language understanding that you just showed. Mm -hmm. You have real-time translation. You could talk to me in one language. I hear it in another language. You and know. then the display is obviously going to be great, yeah. too, yeah. but it's going to add a little bit of weight to the glasses and it's going to make them more expensive. So I think right. for there will be a lot of people who want the kind of full holographic display, but there are also going to be a lot of people for whom, um, you know, they, they want something that eventually is going to be like really thin glasses. And Well, for industrial applications and for some work applications, we need that. Consumer display. stuff, too. You think so? Yeah, I was thinking about this a lot during the... You know, during COVID, when, when everyone kind of went remote for a bit, it's like you're spending all this time on Zoom. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, this is like, a, it's great that we have this, but, um, but in the future, we're, we're like not that many years away from being able to have a virtual meeting where like, you know, it's like, I'm not here physically. It's just my hologram. Yeah. And like, it just feels yeah, like yeah. we're there yeah. and we're physically present. We can yeah, work yeah. on something and collaborate yeah, on sure. something together. But I think this is going to be especially important if with AI. Application, I could live with, with a, a device that, that I'm not wearing all the time. Oh yeah, but I think we're going to get to the point where it actually is. It, it'll be, I mean, there's with, within glasses, there's like thinner frames and there's thicker frames yeah, and there's like all these styles. But um, so I don't, I think we're, we're a while away from having full holographic glasses in the form factor of your glasses. But but I think having it in a pair of stylish, kind of chunkier frame glasses is not that far off. Look at these sunglasses are the face size these days. I could see that. Yeah, and, right? and you that, know what? That's, totally um, that's a very helpful style trend. Yeah, exactly. For, um, that's so, a very helpful style So whoever, style you know, it's like, like I'm, I'm, I'm not, trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying kidding. to like yeah, make, exactly. make my way into becoming like a style yeah. influencer so I can like influence this before, um, you know, before the glasses come to the market. I can I, I see know. you it's attempting it. How's your style influencing working out for you? You know, it's early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, but I don't know. I feel like if, you're, if, if, if a big part of the future of the business is going to be building um, kind of stylish glasses that yeah. people wear, um, this is something I should probably start paying a little more attention that's to. But, I mean, that's the thing about glasses, too. I, I think it's, um, you know, it's unlike, you know, even the watch or, or phones. Like, people really do not want to all look the same. It's, you know, it's, it's a... It's a platform that I think is going to lend itself, going back to the theme that we talked about before, mm -hmm. towards being an open ecosystem, because I think the diversity of form factors that people and styles that people are going to demand is going to be immense. Yeah. Um, it's not like everyone is not going to want to put like the one kind of pair of glasses that you know whoever else designs. Like that's not. I don't think that's going to fly for them. Well, Mark, it's sort of incredible that we're living through a time where the entire computing stack is re being reinvented. And this technology, generative AI, I don't remember another technology that, that in such a fast rate influenced consumers, enterprise, industries, and science. And to be able to, to cut across all these different fields of science from, from climate tech to um, biotech um, uh, to uh, physical sciences. Uh, in every single field that we're encountered, uh, generative AI is, is right in the middle of that 
uh, fundamental transition. And in addition to that, uh, the things that you're talking about, generative AI is going to make a, a profound impact in society. 여러분은 여기까지 젠슨 헌과 마크 주커버그의 시그라프 3부작을 시청하셨습니다. 모두가 AI 에이전트를 갖게 되는 세상, 오픈소스 전략, 차세대 스마트폰이 될 스마트 글래스 이야기가 담겨 있었죠. 여기까지 보셨다면 인공지능에 큰 관심이 있으신 것 같습니다. 그렇다면 매주 7편의 논문을 선별해서 소개해드리는 인공지능 트렌드도 시청해보세요. 많은 도움이 될 겁니다. 여러분들이 미래를 그려가는 데 있어서 도움이 되었길 바라며 이상 엔드플랜의 마초였습니다.